Hi, welcome to Matt's Corner of Gem Cutting. Here I have a really pretty colored piece of tanzanite rough. This color isn't the normal color you might expect to see in tanzanite. Typically tanzanite is heat treated to make them the more common purple, the blue hues. Unheated tanzanite can be an assortment of different colors. This natural orangey color isn't something that I've really seen much of in tanzanite. Uh, this piece shows the typical pleochrism for tanzanite where the color changes depending on the direction that you view the stone. Luckily the color I'm going for happens to line up with one of the larger faces of the stone, uh, which works out pretty well for cutting this piece. Now before I dop the stone, I use a 600 diamond grit lap to grind a nice flat spot for attaching the dop stick. I also grind the edges of the stone where the girdle is going to be to slightly preform the piece into a general shape it will become and smooth out the stone's outline into a more symmetrical shape. The preforming also grinds out any bumps or divots along the edge of the stone which allows for more accurate measuring for finding the center point for attaching the dop stick. This tanzanite piece is fairly valuable so I want to keep the size as large as possible. So instead of using a diagram to cut the stone, I am freeform cutting it. Basically, I just add facets as I go to fit the stone. I start by cutting in girdle facets around the stone. Each of the set of girdle facets I cut to the same depth using the depth gauge along with the fill and sound of the cutting to tell when the facets are cut into equal depth symmetrically around the stone. Girdles can be rounded in, which is the normal for commercial cut stones. I like a faceted girdle as it works well as a base for establishing meat points, especially if starting from the girdle like I'm doing with this stone. I cut the girdle facets to form a rectangular cushion, which will be the outline now for cutting the rest of this stone. After establishing the girdle outline, I use a deep angle to cut in facets all along the girdle to form a level girdle line at the position I want the girdle to be, leaving the amount of depth I want for cutting the crown side of the stone compared to the pavilion. With that line established, the rest of the cutting of the pavilion side of the stone is a process of adding facets to the stone until I have as many as I want to add. This is a little tedious where I am not going off a diagram for facet angles and position. I choose where to place the facet and it is a lot of little bits of cutting followed by looking at the facet and adjusting the angles as needed to get the facets cut in how I want them. Honestly, I think I should have stopped after establishing the girdle outline and designed a cut on the computer based on the measurements of the stone I would have liked that better than going full freeform. Here it is with all of the pavilion facets cut in. I used 3000 diamond grit on a tin lap to prepare the stone for final polish. The 3000 grit works fairly quickly at cutting out the rough scratches left from the 600 grit and allows the final polish to go quickly. When cutting stones, I almost always go from a 600 grit to the 3000 grit and then on to whatever I use for final polish depending on stone type. For this tanzanite, the final polish is given using a Greenway lap, which is a chrome oxide embedded polishing lap. I use soft pressure at low speed while the lap is moistened to get a really nice polish. Here the pavilion side's polish is finished. There are a few fractures still in the piece, but they are fairly minor, and I think that they wouldn't be worth cutting out with how far they still go into the stone. Alrighty, on to the crown side. I didn't video transferring the stone, but between placing the stone in the transfer block and starting on the crown, I did end up getting on the computer to recreate what I had done so far into a diagram so that I could design a crown before I got to cutting it. This way the facet meets are a lot closer to where I want them sooner. The recreated diagram doesn't match perfectly to the stone outline, so as I go, I adjust any angles for groups of facets as needed to keep the meat points nice and clean. I make note of changes on the diagram so that I can have the new angles for when I need to come back to those facets later for pre-polish and polishing. 
It only takes a few angle adjustments to get the crown to cut in nice and neatly. And the cutting of the crown of the stone goes fairly smoothly. I'm fairly happy with how easy the crown facets cut to place. It was definitely a lot easier after having it free design than just free cutting the crown as well. With the facets all cut in how I want them, I run back through the sequence for polishing the stone. I do this for all the crown facets except for the table facet. Tanzanite's hardness is between 6 and 7 on the most hardness scale, which is a little on the softer side for gemstones that go into fine jewelry. Because of this, it polishes fairly quickly when compared to harder stones, but tanzanite should be handled carefully in jewelry as they also accumulate wear more easily. All polished up, the stone is looking really good. I just have one facet left to go on the stone. I cut and polish the table facet in last after the rest of the crown is completely finished because it is best done using an angle adapter with my machine. It is better to just finish the rest of the crown to polish instead of switching the stone back and forth to the adapter. A lot of fastening machines can easily cut in the table without an angle adapter, but ones with a straight up mass usually work better just using one for the table. The table meets up pretty well with the crown I designed and the polish looks good, so the stone is finished. To try and heat the stone off the dop stick would likely cause damage to the pavilion of the stone, so to avoid that I soak the piece in acetone until all the super glue has dissolved. I can then finally see the finished piece. And boom! This is how the rock looked like starting out, and this is the finished piece. I really like the color. The only thing I would have done differently is pre-designing the pavilion as well to be able to optimize the stone to reduce the amount of shadowing. There's just a little bit more shadowing going on towards the middle of the stone than I would prefer. But overall, it is still a really amazing stone. The piece finished at 1.84 karat weight and is 7.5 by 6.1 millimeters. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed watching my video and subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos are put out. Other than my YouTube page, you can check out many more stones that I have cut through my Etsy store called Maxfield Lapidary. Thank you for watching.